Mary and I met at a party at Zadie Smith's house, and she came up to me and told me in her inimitable voice, literally can't be imitated, you, I hated you, but I changed my mind. And I was like, this is the greatest person I've ever met. Then we had our picture taken together and she said, tits up ho, which I thought was really important, and I took it out into the world with me. And since then, she's been a constant support, an inspiration both as a writer and as a friend. And I think that to have up close access to someone who is as generous in their life as they are in their work is an amazing gift for a young writer. I obviously knew who Mary was. I've read all three of Mary's memoirs. I had read Liar's Club, I had read Cherry, I had read her poetry. I knew that she was sort of a touchstone for thinking women everywhere um, and some thinking men. I think that Liar's Club was my point of entry to her voice, to her story, to her world. And what I think she did that is such a gift is she created this trilogy that really tells the story of a woman coming into her own, deals with issues of sexuality, religion, addiction, and really takes you on the journey. I think reading Liars Club is, is such a point of connection between people, between women, because it shows that you see the world in similar ways, the humor of it, the pain of it, the poetry of it, and that there's a sense that there's a shared value system and a shared understanding of this sort of crazy constellation of experiences and a shared admiration of this sort of one heroic figure. So many women I know have said that that book gave them the courage to be honest about their experience of growing up in the world, their experience of childhood. I think the way people are satisfied by reading, you know, like the three installments of the Hunger Games, or I don't know how many Hunger Games there are, I'm sorry, but it's like she's giving you that in memoir form. She's giving you this incredibly clear, strong journey of a woman trying to self-actualize. And I think Lit really affected me because like, well, I don't struggle with addiction. I think realizing as an adult that you're not done and there's more work to do and that your traumas in certain ways, although you've written about them and although you've thought about them, they've caught up with you and you have more recovery to do. That was a really beautiful concept to me and surprised me and was a new journey to take with this voice that I trusted so much. And I do think that the book, both because of just Mary's kind of loose, conversational, deceptively poetic style and the incredibly human content of it, that I know plenty of people who aren't, you know, crazy lit heads or memoir, memoir enthusiasts who have found her writing incredibly page turning and inspiring. I think Mary takes, took memoir out of the world of like the confessional. What she wrote could have just been a women's, could have been a women's confessional, my insane childhood, my wild life. And instead she made it into a piece of poetry and made it and took away the stigma for so many. I know I wouldn't have been able to write a memoir had it not been for Mary taking the stigma away from the idea of sort of like a woman's confessional work because she refused to be categorized that way. She's just been this incredibly supportive force in my writing, in my life, and to meet someone who is as dynamic, warm, and kind as their work is, is a real gift, especially for someone who's looking to make a life as a writer. Well, I think one of the main challenges of writing a memoir the great challenge is just the fallibility of memory and how much you feel comfortable relying on your own experience, how much you feel that your experience is representative of what actually happened and how much does that matter to you. And I think what's so complex is that there are a number of experiences recalled in my book that I showed to friends and they went, I know this happened and I know this happened this way, but it really didn't feel that way to me. And so, yes, memoir is about your own experience, but memoir also purports to be an accurate retelling of the past and how do you balance those two realities and do it in a way that's entertaining and ethical and emotional. And I think also another challenge that I felt was re-entering certain traumatic experiences puts you in a space that you haven't been through in a long time and suddenly you find yourself sort of, I mean there were a few things in my book where I found myself acting out towards the people in my life in a way that was totally of another time, totally had nothing to do, like you know, talking to my boyfriend like he was like you know, the person who spoke abusively to me in high school. Like just, you find your world kind of um, turning in on itself and you have to be really careful because you wanna be able to live in the world and also be a writer. I think it's really important to remember that although something may be so emotionally rich to you, it may be totally opaque to your reader unless you illuminate it for them in a way that has the same kind of pace and style 
and energy that you might put into a piece of fiction or a piece of investigative journalism. And I think the really hardest thing is being as hard on your experiences as you would be on any other piece of writing you'd put into the world and making sure that you're not sort of resorting to maudlin language. You know, there's so many kind of e easy outs when you're writing about your own experience, especially what could be considered a traumatic experience. And actually, The Liar's Club was a huge influence on me because of the way that it injected humor and also injected poetry. I mean, the fact that Mary Carr is both a poet and, I mean, she might not say this, but a humorist, and both of those aspects existed in this book that was so full of trauma and challenge. That was um, always a benchmark for me. Do better, try harder, be more rigorous. I think what makes for me a great memoir is a book that could only come from that specific writer, but that also illuminates a universal experience. So the combination of a completely one-of-a-kind perspective, and that's often an outsider perspective, you know, an uppity feminist woman in the South, uh, you know, something about, you know, a closeted gay man in an adopted family, you know, the, the story of an outsider, someone who's been silenced in various ways, and a story that could only be theirs, but that also illuminates kind of what makes us all human. And again, I think part of what has made The Liars Club so resonant for women is that, well, they didn't all have Mary Carr's sort of outlandish, almost, almost fable-like childhood. They all did have the experience of feeling unknown, misunderstood, and abused in various ways in their own lives. I think it was the 10 year or 15 year anniversary of Liars Club when Mary wrote about her experience of the connections that the book had given her, the letters she got, the people crying in her Pilates class or whatever, you know, like, and I think that's such evidence that the book went beyond just being her story and became a universal story, despite the fact that there's nothing universal about the circumstances under which she grew up.